This video is going to be about the campaign priorities in Falcon 4 BMS, especially some topics about how to use the priorities tab, the target slider, the mission slider, and the PAX slider uh, without using the set by headquar headquarters. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, how to avoid uh, very long range missions at the beginning of the campaign. As for example, let me find one here. This could be a very good candidate. This is another candidate. This is another candidate. All these missions that go through the uh, first line of enemy defense in territory infested by uh, enemy aircraft, how to avoid them from the beginning on. And um, we're going to discuss two things. The first one is how to use the, the sliders and the second one is how to use the mission data edit via mission commander. So this is a quick outline of the topics with uh, more specifics. <clears throat> About these sliders, I want to discuss specifically one example of the offens offensive um, counter-air missions and uh, the effect of these two sliders, OCA, as well as the airfields. Is slider, this one, what it happens to the missions generated. The pack slider, how to set the pack slider to avoid long-range missions and why sometimes it does not work. And then at the end of this first part, uh, the uh, a quick and nice neat strategy for the first day of your uh, PMS campaign where you focus basically basically in destruction of the enemy air defenses sweep missions uh, defensive caps as well as uh, in the second half of day uh, on OCA strikes then later on uh, how to use the mission commander these two topics are mission commanders related here uh, and then suicidal missions is uh, something that I just want to go more one over uh, at the end of uh, this uh, short video. So let's start with the first topic, effect of sliders. So um, let's open a campaign in Roni's Rolling Fire, the second campaign from the top. Uh, we're going to choose uh, this airbase here. We will not be flying. So we're going to be in an airbase in a squadron with um, the UAVs. <coughs> Doesn't matter. I'm going to start. And then that's what you get at the beginning. So <coughs> you get here the priority step. You're going to be, first of all, taking a look at the target and mission type. And uh, we're going to just run one time uh, with the uh, uh, default tab and then compare what happens afterwards. OK, so uh, focus on the offensive counter air mission. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to pass the time quite fast later in the video. But first of all, just let me crank on here. So the first thing that we see here, that uh, kind of a full page of OCA strikes uh, missions were generated all around the place. And uh, we're going to see the effect of this OCA strike slider when we put at zero. So we're going to restart the campaign here and then just let go again uh, to the same process. OK, so. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to put the offensive counter air at zero. I won't touch anything else. So it's going to be all default here. It's going to be offensive counter air. The pack's going to be still the same. Let's see what happens here. Same stuff. And then let's generate. As you can see here, we don't need to wait a lot of time. You can see that no offensive counter air missions were generated. As you can see here, we have the airstrikes, which are mostly strategic uh, uh, strikes. We have the air interdiction missions, the suppression of enemy air defense in, uh, in, in form of uh, destruction of the enemy air defense and so on and so on. So what happens now if we um, uh, come here and uh, play around with the target instead of the mission? And that's something very interesting in focus. So instead of uh, setting offensive counter air at zero, I'm going to leave it here and then I'm going to put the airfields at zero. So uh, one would expect, uh, and this is wrong, I'm going to say from, from the beginning on, that if you put the offensive counter air uh, quite high, but you put this slide for the airfields at zero, you would not have any OCA strikes anymore. And this is not what happened, as we can see. As you can see here, mission is going to be generated. <coughs> 
And uh, interesting things to know now where the emissions are being generated. So as you can see here, most of the emissions are all emissions are generated. They are not generated to major airfields. As you can see here, for example, this mission here is generated to an airstrip. This mission here is generated from an airstrip. These other missions here are generated to different installations. For example, you can have OCA strikes versus um, uh, army bases, for example, here. And, and so on and so on. So this is something that uh, is, uh, as far as I know, not written in anywhere. If you want more OCA missions versus targets which are not main air bases, you can have it by putting the airfields to zero. By airfields, this meant really the big air, huge big air bases uh, in Falcon 4 BMS. So what about now the pack sliders? The pack sliders is also the priority step on the rightmost. And uh, this is a, a map with different areas of the Korea Peninsula and uh, with different colors. Uh, each area here has a, a color from ranging from very white to very red, the numbers zero to five. And uh, this here is an additional uh, parameter in the priority of a mission. For example, if you uh, want to have a lot of missions uh, in this uh, pack here, the Tozan City, you would uh, try to put this slider as high as possible. Um, as you can see here from the beginning on in the standard default installation of your Falcon BMS, there are these uh, red packs on top of the north of the North Korea, close to the border with China, which is uh, uh, a very problem for mission uh, generation since uh, the engine, the campaign engine is going to try to generate several missions uh, going through enemy territory from the beginning on. So uh, with the PEC slider, you can try to minimize that. I say minimize, I don't say that you can put it to zero. We're going to see what's going to happen. White, white does not uh, goes to zero, the number of missions going to the north, but you can minimize a lot. So I'm going to start this um, doing a lot changing the northmost so they are all at zero then in the Pyongyang um, city I'm going to also put here at um, a zero uh, I'm going to put here in the uh, Songjin city also to zero uh, here to the east also to zero here to the Wonsan city to zero and uh, here's the flood exactly this region. I hope you can see the video. So this is the flood at the beginning of the war. I'm going to put then these three, four packs to the max because I want that the max missions should happen at the beginning on there. Okay, so I'm going to put very high. One could argue that uh, packs in the back should not have any, any uh, pack priority, but it will not change right now. Okay, I'm gonna just play with the enemy territory. This just applies for the blue side, blue forces, South Korea and USA in that case. Okay, so remember that when the other, uh, when you're playing with the pack target, uh, slider target and slider mission, uh, we are able to change the type of uh, OCA missions, but you are not able to. Um, um, suppress completely. So now we're gonna we're gonna have is we're gonna uh, minimize a lot of the number of OCA missions. The mission is gonna be still to default, so OCAs versus airfields. We can play with that just in a second. And uh, let's see how it go. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna open the ATO. I'm gonna accelerate the time. I need first to start the mission. I'm gonna accelerate to 64 and see how the 60 the ATO looks like. So you have here. I'm going to open here and let's see how the these guys take place. So remember that when we had before, all these missions were around the place. Take a look now what it look like. The OCA missions being generated, they are most of them in the pack region that we have selected. If you take a look here, I'm going to turn on here all installations so you can see better. You see here they are very close to the front. Uh, uh, with one exception. You can see here that this is an exception. There is a mission up there. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so this helps a lot to control. 
there will be of course missions that are going to be up there and this is the topic of next chapter as you're going to see in uh, in a few minutes before I talk about uh, the mission data and uh, how to edit it in the mission commander, uh, I'd like to give a small suggestion how to set your priorities for the air tasking manager for the campaign in the first day of a uh, war in the Korea theater. So basically, we are going to be focusing us on the first part of the day in destruction of the enemy air defenses in regions uh, behind the flood, the forward line of our own troops, and as well as, the, as, as with bar caps. And as the days go, goes on, we are going to go into sweep and into missions like OCA strikes against airfields as well as air bases uh, a little bit deeper in enemy territory. So let's then set the priority step. Uh, for target mission impacts. Let's start first with the target. We are going to keep the aircraft high for the sweep missions that may occur late when the air defenses are destroyed. You're going to keep the airfields at uh, average value to have the uh, airlift missions, air defense at max, and the rest you're going to put to zero since we don't want to target any of these structures at the beginning. Uh, ground units you could argue would be interesting to have the A-10s and the A-H-64s and so on attacking the flot at the beginning, but let's keep it simple and uh, put at zero so that the engine suppress complete this kind of mission here. So mission type. So offensive counter air, as I said, we are not flying the beginning. Uh, some suppressions at max, air interdiction is going to be at zero, closer support at zero, strategic strikes also at zero, and shipping at zero. Defensive counter air, I won't touch it, it's already uh, a very small value. Remember, this is a priority value. These three things you have the same weight in the priority of emissions as I described in the, B in the uh, BMS forum. So I'm going to keep it this value here, so a lot of missions are going to be generated already. And the recon, I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, for the packs, what you're going to change is just the enemy territory. I'm going to put completely five in the uh, packs uh, within the enemy territory uh, uh, close to the to the flood. Um, uh, the one sun city, I'm going to keep it very small at the beginning. Pyongyang, which is defended by this uh, circle of air defenses, is going to be zero at the beginning, as well as the packs in the north. Okay, so this one here is going to be also zero, but this other two here is going to be very small in case we run out of um, uh, missions at the beginning. So uh, for our region, I won't change anything. I'm going to just leave it as it is. Target typed, aircraft, airfields, air defenses. Again, mission type, some suppression, maximize, defensive counter air recon not touched, and packs focusing uh, behind the flood. So let's see how it's go. I'm going to speed up the video now. Okay, let me pause here then and then let's take a look. We are now at six hours into the first day. So the campaign started at one hour uh, Zulu. Now we are six hours, seven minutes, 39 Zulu. So we're five hours, a little bit over five hours into the campaign. And uh, the ATO generated a full page of uh, suppression of enemy air defenses. As you can see, the missions were generated more or less quite late. Uh, there is a overhead time for the missions to be generated, but most of the missions uh, versus enemy air defenses are around the flood, with a few exceptions here in the area over uh, one zone. As I told you, I put here a priority of 10, so these are defenses or nevertheless targeted, but most of them are right here. There are no missions into deep into enemy territory. So five hours would be nice now to uh, change the mission uh, that are being fracked. So right now we have target aircraft and air defense, a little bit of airfields for air mobile. We did not see 
any OCA uh, strike, uh, the sweeps started being generated. Sweeps started because of uh, they were requested, and the enemy air defenses are really weak. Let's take a look where they are. So we have one here in this area. You have uh, another coming later time, same area. We have another one here uh, north of Seoul, and so on and so on. So the missions are being corrected. Uh, correct being uh, fragged in this sense. So as you can see here, we are at 6 o'clock and missions are being fragged around 10 o'clock. Now it's time to uh, change a little bit the number of missions. What you're going to do is the following. I'm going to turn off all these uh, missions here so we don't need to see that. <clears throat> Would be nice, DCS, yes, to have a uh, 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 the possibility to turn off all missions in one click. Uh, but uh, as we know, the user interface for Falcon is notoriously complicated to be um, changed. Nevertheless, very, very nice new user interface. So what I want to do now is to start doing OCA strikes. I'm going to keep the airfields a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to be keep sorry, the airfield is very high so that uh, I have air bases uh, being uh, attacked. Remember that the air base is going to be attacked as well as these airstrips. The airstrips are hard coated with 60%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the offensive counter air and uh, I'm going to put the offensive counter air a little bit higher and see how does it go. Let's put here this would be 50%. I'm going to put here like 40% offensive counter air. Okay. Uh, the rest is going to be the same. And uh, hopefully the idea is that uh, the first airfields here around an airstrip is going to be targeted targeted uh, with uh, uh, the uh, seed de de deads and uh, the sweeps uh, keep going on. Okay. So let's see how it go. I'm going to then speed up. Okay, we are now 11 hours into the campaign. This is the 12th Zulu. And uh, as you can see, a lot of OCA strike packages were generated. And uh, the first thing that you can see, there is a lot of uh, targets around the flood, but as well as missions uh, that are long range. Um, as you can see, although we had, this is important just to remember, Again, although we had set zero for that, zero for that, and so on, and also zero for the Pyongyang, we still have missions being generated up there to this airfield. Uh, I'm going to show you how to suppress that uh, almost completely in a few minutes. So uh, now it's uh, 10, 11, uh, 11 hours into the campaign. We're going to change. You can see there are a lot of OCA strikes. Uh, fragged uh, for uh, time on target 16 o'clock, 4 in the afternoon Zulu, and so on and so on. So what you're going to do is we are going to uh, decrease now the uh, number of um, uh, airfields to the half of it. You're going to still keep the air defenses high. What you're going to do is you're going to increase now the, the army base with the hope that you can have also the CC missions. Uh, and uh, the naval bases and so on. So with the hope that the uh, the engine is going to start targeting not only airfields and airstrips, but you're going to start targeting also uh, bases for helicopters, naval bases and so on. So we keep aircraft high for the sweep. Uh, sweep is still taking place from time to time, now much less because the aircraft is uh, is competing the number of aircraft available for the OCA strikes. Uh, we have a lot of defensive counter air being generated. The QRRs are being, you know, fragged interception when necessary and uh, the, de the destru destruction of enemy air defense are taking place normally. You can see here they're most on the, on the, around the zone of the flood zone, but also right behind. So we have here then changed army, command and control and level bases. Uh, the offensive counter is going to, we're going to keep more or less the same. Uh, the rest all keeps the same defense of air. And what we're going to do is now we're going to start moving 
after um, almost half of the day, the, the, uh, our mission's a little bit behind the flocks, the flood. So what to do is I'm going to decrease here this region here, which has been targeted many times. The airfields are being bombed after hour after hour. I'm going to decrease to a tree. This also to a tree and this also to a tree. This guy here I'm going to increase for a tree. This also for a tree. This also for a tree. Then the region south of Pyongyang is going to go for a two. Pyongyang itself is going to be a one. And that's it. So with that, oh, this one is also need to decrease for a tree. Is that now they're going to be the same, very similar priority in terms of packs for missions close to the flood and late on the flood. So let's take a look then on the number of uh, air bases uh, this uh, triad. So the number of airbase destroyed can be uh, found in the order of battle for the uh, North Korea. Let's take a look where all these airbases are. So this airstrip is destroyed here in the front. Then you have this other airbase also the front destroyed. We have the airstrip also destroyed. We have the Kama airport partially damaged, of most damage. You have the Kojo airstrip destroyed. We have the Koksan Highway airstrip dis, uh, lightly destroyed. The Koksan Air Base, which is here nearby, is not at all destroyed. The Kumni Air Base, which is important, is uh, just half operational. You have the Miring Air Base, uh, which is the major air base close to being destroyed. You have the Highway uh, Nunchonin airstrip destroyed. Onjin Air Base, which is here on this peninsula. Uh, very barely operational. Pungchang Pung Up Air Base, which is up there. This one of these long range missions succeeded uh, nicely. Sun Dock Air Base, also in the north. Uh, airstrip, very close to the flood here, is also destroyed. And so on and so on. So basically, by doing doing this kind of tech, oh, the Toksan Air Base is also destroyed on the top. So we manage to to focus on all airstrips and air bases close to the flood. You can see here that most of them are destroyed. We can turn on all the airfields, and you can see here that these ones here that are blinking were not targeted so far. I would say that for some reason Hayoju here and this other one, I don't know the name, was not uh, heated because probably there is no squadron stationed there, but the rest of it has been um, badly damaged or completely destroyed close for the moment and so on. So it's uh, it, uh, it was a good start using these tactics now. This will continue though, as you can see here at the ATO, we still have a lot of ATO missions uh, still to be on target. Uh, it's going to be in four hours from now on. Uh, let's see then uh, how the, the war goes on uh, until the end and then we recap what we have done so far. So I think the destruction is uh, going on very well of the uh, North Korean air defenses. Uh, I think would be proper to change uh, the packs. So what we're going to do is we are going to decrease now even more uh, the packs close to the flood uh, to a two and increase uh, the ones over the top and over Pyongyang also to a four of them to uh, destroy more the air bases and air defenses there. Okay, so we have all trees here. Choose close to flood, four and the most far away. And let's go. So let's stop here at uh, after midnight. We are 23 hours into the campaign. 
China just enter declared a war on um, South Korea. As you can see in the last hours, we had here these three airfields, these two airfields targeted. The uh, Kumni Air Base was targeted as well, the Koksan Air Base, as well this airstrip. Uh, let's review a little bit what we have uh, uh, seen so far. So first of all, uh, you can see the number of OCA strikes decreased a lot. It means that's an indication there are not a lot of targets anymore around being called it. Uh, mission requests uh, versus army bases, naval uh, bases, as well as air bases. That means that it would be probably nicer or more intelligent to change the priorities uh, a few hours ago to different kind of missions and or target types. For example, we could have started our air interdiction or enclosed air support and strikes phase a little bit earlier. But since I want to keep a little bit simpler, uh, this uh, this kind of tutorial, I just kept focus on this uh, formation. Let's take a look what we have destroyed so far. Let's go to the uh, order of battle for North Korea. Um, let's see. So we have this airfield here partially repaired. Let me turn off all things so we don't get bothered by them. Uh, partially destroyed. How do Air base is completely destroyed now. The airstrip this is destroyed. The Hanju air base uh, is also destroyed here. We have the Incheon airstrip partially repaired, not completely operational. The Kama airport is an important airport. Two runways partially destroyed. Koksan air base, which was the big one, just one runway operational. The airstrip is completely destroyed. The Kumnin air base also important here on the on the um, on the east very 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 much out of action airstrips on Jin air base on the peninsula is coming slowly back we need to, we would need to reattack that uh, this other airstrip and I think that's it so basically we uh, have uh, the first line of airstrips and air bases destroyed. It expands now the Koksan air base and uh, the Kumnin air base is also uh, destroyed, which is nice. Uh, the airfields in the north were repaired. Uh, we are not fragged anymore. So let's take a look at the first levels. What we have so, so air defenses. We have halved the number of air defenses. Uh, actually, the number of uh, air defense vehicles, most of them ra radars and uh, tellers and so on of um, North Korea were destroyed. You can see here, if you follow this curve, here's the beginning of the war. Uh, it follows more or less a constant slope. Here has a very strong slope and then it flats out. This is an indication that we are running out of targets for the packs we have decided. So this would be more or less the time, or a little bit earlier, where you would uh, change the phase of our campaign, go for a uh, suppression of enemy air defenses, destruction of enemy air defenses, slash OCA strikes to strikes and close air support interdiction. That would be the nice part. In, uh, start of the the, eve, the first evening. In terms of uh, air bases, we had a very nice start. You can see here it went really deep. We had more or less like uh, one fifth of the air bases available for the North Korea by beginning of the night. And then uh, we they started, the engine started focusing on the air defenses. Uh, and then the air bases came online again. That would be the time to reattack them and so on. The RT is not operational. And this is important to have them very low at this time because this is the time that. Uh, China is going to join the war and you need actually to have as less as much air bases out of action for North Korea to just to keep our uh, attention to the uh, Sukhoi 27 and 30 spy from, from China. In terms of aircraft, uh, which is nice is this slope here is uh, quite high at the beginning, then it flats out because there are no air defenses. The slope here for the aircraft of North Korea is very steep at the beginning, so it did a good job, but here there is a lot of air base being closed. That's why the number comes back slowly. When the air base come back slowly, the number of aircraft comes back, which are active. So this is an indication, but we are good. We uh, normally, by just playing with the priority slider inside BMS, you can get here uh, like uh, two to one or maybe 
three to one sometimes if you play well with these lighters but not better than that when china enters the war so this is good which is bad is that uh, we, we 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 let these guys come back okay uh, but this more or less uh, concludes this first part about using these lighters in the package uh, priorities uh, window. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, how to edit a mission data file and uh, to optimize uh, one or two parameters there. To edit the mission data, you just need the mission commander by Falcus. You don't need to open a campaign file as you normally would do. Uh, what you need is just go to the last tab here on the right side, which says mission data, and click browse to open a mission data file. When you click in and open it, you can see different XML fi files here and uh, each one of these files corresponds to one campaign inside Falcon 4 BMS. This is the first campaign inside BMS, the second campaign that we were playing uh, with a few minutes ago, second up to the fifth campaign. This is not used. So if you click on that campaign, this is an XML file, you see here all fields, it opens a table <coughs> which all missions which are generated or used by the ATO. And we're going to be focusing on the OCA strike, which has the ID number 13. Okay, And this has a lot of parameters. Before you start playing with that, be aware, first of all, make a backup of all XML files somewhere on your computer outside of the campaign folder of Falcon. Second of all, don't play with that if you don't know what you are doing. If you change these parameters, especially these parameters for the flight plan generation, it can place havoc inside the mission generation um, uh, in the campaign. What you're looking for for the OCA strike is uh, these flags. The flags come here after all these fields about the waypoints, and these flags contain information on which kind of um, threats uh, we can face with this mission, if it's going to require ACMs, uh, squad, seed, if you're going to need a AWACS, whatever whatever's going to happen. And there are three flags here which are important for us, which has been discussed in the BMS for forum for other versions in the past, which is the threat, the flag 13, 14, and 15. So the 13th no threat means uh, that the missions will only be flagged or fragged when there is no threat at all. That means air defense threats. This is the case, for example, for bar caps. They will not be fragged inside uh, enemy some engagements, but also for AWACS, tankers, recon, um, uh, recon missions, oh, sorry, tankers, J stars, and so on, airlifts and relocate missions. Okay, so this is, so no threats, at all. avoid threats. That means that it's going to try to avoid by flying vertically or it's going to fly around or whatever. And this is uh, almost not used in PMS in this version right now. And the high threat means that uh, this is going to be flown uh, 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 always unless you have a high threat uh, uh, air defense region. This is a case, for example, for TARCAP, for uh, escort missions, uh, for uh, uh, escort missions, uh, this is for rescue escort missions, escort missions, seed strikes, OCA strikes going to be flown unless there is a very high threat and so on and so on. So what you're going to do is you're going to change this flag. I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you do is you click uh, on the line that you want and you can see the flags here and this you have. You cannot have all three of them uh, clicked otherwise this does not work out. You need to select one. So what you can do is change this one. Okay, But before I, I click save, I'm going to click cancel because uh, uh, this is not the best way to do. Okay, This is one option. If you do that way, see here that the team that is being now using this uh, vision data is the default. That means all teams are using this default. Uh, you can see if you click team 1, team 0, team 2, there is no teams there. It's empty. This That means that uh, South Korea and North Korea, they are both using these configurations here. The OCA strike is going to avoid uh, the um, uh, to be fragged if you have extreme treat in that case here. 
the deal is uh, would be nice to have different mission data for each team. So what you do is in Mission Command, you just copy from default to all teams. That means that all data from this table is going to be uh, used to fill the other teams tables. I'm going to click OK. The mission data file was already written on the on your hard disk. And now if you go now to team one, which is South Korea, it has a table and North Korea team six has also a table. OK, so now if I want to change just for South Korea, I can come here to team one, go to OCA strike and then click here at uh, dodge air defense vertically so that only medium air defense threats are going to be uh, allowed to have uh, to exist in the region. OK, so what you need to do is uh, save now. You have now OCA strikes for team uh, one, South Korea. Okay, it's going to be, uh, sorry, I'm doing a mistake. It's not team one. Sorry, that's not team one, not team one, not team one. It's team two South Korea. Yeah, this is not correct. Team one is USA. So this is going to go abort, dodge vertically, save. Now it's saving a hard disk. Okay, if you go now and open, for example, again, this table one for campaign one, you can go to team two. The tape is there. You go to the OCA strike and this saved correctly there as you would have, okay? So then what you need to do is restart your Falcon. That's what I'm gonna do right now. So I restart Falcon, now I'm in campaign. I'm gonna choose the campaign one, which is the one correspond to the mission data file zero one that I have changed. Uh, rolling fire, campaign one, this is campaign zero, campaign one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna choose again one squadron on the south, which I'm not flying, this is the uh, UAV squadron, I'm going to click commit. <clears throat> I'm going to leave all settings the same and uh, going to just change again the packs on the north to zero and uh, we're going to see the effect what is going on here. Okay. So I have change, changed now. I'm going to take a look now at the um, offensive counter air, which missions are going to be generated. And very interesting, now we just have missions being generated which are uh, very close to the, to the flood. For example, in this case here, uh, it's only being targeted a air defense radar is going to be targeted here at this position via an OCA strike. You can see here that contrary to before where we did not have this flag changed, a lot of OCA strikes around the map were generated, although the priority spec was selected the same way. Now with this new additional uh, flag, uh, the OCA strike is going to be only generated uh, to the north when the air defenses are uh, being destroyed or uh, the, the air defense in general network is weakened. Let's see how that is. I'm going to crank up the speed, also the video, and then see how things going to be generated in time. So right now we are at 1 hour and 30 minutes, so half an hour into the mission. Let's see how this goes. So we are now five hours inside the campaign, six hours Zulu. And uh, as you can see here, the engine did not generate any OCA strike very deep into enemy territory. All OCA strikes are close to the floating regions which uh, average or uh, average uh, air defense threat. The um, suppression enemy air defenses uh, are going on. There are over almost two pages here in the air testing order of suppression of enemy air defense going on. The OCA strikes have been targeting um, these two air bases here, airstrips, army bases, radars, and so on, uh, quite a lot. It did not uh, go into this region here, 
uh, where there are um, other um, small airfields due to the air defenses did not touch this region because of the very strong air defenses nor here so that means it works if you combine that now this flag idea with for example this uh, suggests for a first day campaign strategy I think uh, we can achieve uh, a very interesting uh, very, uh, very interesting results uh, inside Falcon campaign So, finally, a few words about suicidal missions. Suicidal missions is something that is a complaint that uh, comes from time to time in our PMS forum. And uh, I hope I have clarified a little bit how to suppress them uh, via these sliders uh, themselves. You can uh, s uh, suppress them in the sense that uh, at the beginning of a campaign where the air defenses and the air threats are very strong, they are not being fragged at all deep into enemy territory. I also showed you that you can complement that by using this flag in the mission data, which I only recommend for people which are used to work with that. This could be, for example, in the future, a standard settings in the BMS um, um, configuration uh, when it comes from uh, from installed directly. Uh, but it m must be also said that these very long range missions, suicide begin, it happens from time to time. Uh, you need to understand that a package when it is uh, uh, request a mission is requested, there are several uh, elements that uh, play a role here. It's not uh, one value that defines if the mission is going to be generated or not. You have the priorities, you have also the mission type, you have the packages, the packs priority, you also have a bonus for the kind of mission, you have some random number, and in some missions even distance from the target to the float. All these play a role. And then from some missions which receive a very strong bonus as I described the BMS forum from the beginning on because it's a very important base deep into enemy territory, this uh, has a chance, a small chance, uh, but uh, it may happen in, in a campaign. Having that in mind, uh, Please accept it or just come and delete the mission uh, in the ATO if you think this mission is completely crazy. But remember, if you do that, the AI on the other side will not be able to do that. It's going to be still planning. Uh, I hope the, you enjoyed this video. I plan to do a series of videos about the uh, dynamic campaigns in general, going over the Falcon campaign in detail, the origin of the Falcon uh, campaign, what's the idea behind it before Falcon times, as well as uh, try to develop a dynamic campaign for a uh, another two simulators which are around. But let's see how it go. Okay, see you around. Bye bye.